Olá, sejam bem-vindos ao terceiro e último dia do nosso EBAC Live. Bom, eu sou a Helena Cardoso e hoje nós vamos falar um pouquinho sobre as carreiras em audiovisual e computação gráfica. A nossa conversa hoje vai ser em inglês que é o único idioma que nós usamos em todas as atividades dos nossos cursos de graduação aqui na IBAC. Para quem ainda não conhece a IBAC, ou já conhece, mas quer saber um pouquinho mais, eu compartilho aqui um vídeo rápido com um pouquinho dos nossos cursos, nossos professores e alunos. IBAC helped me a lot to discover this, discover who I am and discover what really I want to do in my future. How, how did you choose 3D or motion graphics? <laughs> I don't know, I didn't choose yet. Right, that's something that we can do. Um, it's even better for us because <laughs> uh, we just want to be part of the entertainment and movie industry for now. And by learning a lot about it, we can choose the way that we can go. So either 2D, 3D, games, VFX. So it's a great opportunity, yeah. yeah. The differentiation about EBAC was the lectures and professors who are active in the field professionally. It's really nice. It's really nice because <laughs> we can we can live at home. Yeah, and speaking English. And also the opportunity to study and you have had for sure and have a international degree. Well, I feel like here in the back we are learning the most advanced and cutting edge softwares and we're getting very privileged information and knowledge. You can really go and ask the teacher about our story and about our work and they know what we're talking about. Uh, they are professionals working. No and teaching. And they will help you. In Brazil, to have an international degree is something outstanding. So it's so important to your professional life. And very few schools, even all around the world, are giving, are bringing, bringing this to their students. Now, I really know what I want to do. Olá. Eu sou Carlos Pilegi, Program Leader do Foundation Art oh, and Design. Yeah. English. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Kevin, Principal Lecturer, Program Leader, and Head of Department for Games, Animation and Visual Effects. My name is Diego Bloom. Welcome to the Program for Graphics Design and Illustration. In the 21st century, the key word for the job market and the educational environment is creativity. We mirror the way the industry works. We support a studio-based culture where students work in small teams and learn how to work both independently and collaboratively. We highlight the importance of independent study, where we facilitate the student's journey into becoming an autonomous, investigative, critical thinker. We encourage our students to disrupt and rethink their relationship with creativity and with their use of media, both old and new. Creativity is knowing how to use the tools you have to explore ideas and put them into practice. The biggest advantages of studying at EBAC come through the university's strong academic quality, which is paramount to all current and future educational provisions on offer. Specialist art universities are at a critical position in the development of learning and teaching, providing innovative, creative and critical learning environments that help to foster student entrepreneurship and research-linked practice. The school provides students with the opportunity to study in Brazil on a course identical to the one in the United Kingdom. Assured and accredited by the University of Hertfordshire and supported by the close relationships we have with the creative industries. We mimic every aspect of both teaching and learning that UH deploy or what's exposing students to some of the greatest minds from industry. Here at ABAC, we prepare creative leaders ready to operate around the world in an increasing competitive market. This is an entirely new model for Brazil, and EBAC's vision for education is very unique. Learning starts from foundation and pre-foundation level, which support our students with strategies to engage with ideas and principles that are shaping the contemporary world. 
supporting them to become creative practitioners capable of communicating across a wide range of strategies. The efficiency of these methods allows the student to quickly achieve a level of professionalism. Art, tech, animation, video. Through live projects for industry, along with internships and stakeholder feedback on teaching provisions, we help foster the growth of the student's journey and onward success in partnership with some of the best facilities globally. Open to the program, to creatively exploring all the different tasks they will be provided with. Open to be influenced by research, to not knowing where the project is going to lead them and not, to be, not being too attached to whatever they think they already know and like. This is the way to make the most of, out of the program and expand their creativity and capabilities as far as they can. I love you back, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, brilliant, we'll have that one. At the, at the end. Okay. Bom. Antes da gente mudar de idioma, é, para que todo mundo possa aproveitar bem a nossa conversa, a gente sugere que no canto inferior direito da tela, você escolha a opção 1080p, que é a melhor resolução de vídeo. E a gente também sugere que você nos escute com fones de ouvido. A nossa equipe está a postos no nosso chat para responder a quaisquer dúvidas. E você também pode mandar suas perguntas para os nossos palestrantes de hoje pelo chat. Não se preocupe, as perguntas podem ser escritas em português e nós traduzimos aqui para os professores responderem. Caso a gente não consiga responder a todas as perguntas ao vivo, a gente envia as respostas por escrito após o evento. Tá bom? Vamos lá? Agora em inglês. Shall we start? I'll do a quick introduction of everyone. Uh, so tonight we have Danny Graydon uh, from the UK. Uh, it's almost midnight in the UK now, <laughs> but he's here with us. Uh, Danny's a journalist, author, and academic specializing in films and comics. He is the collaborative partnership leader at the University of Hertfordshire. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight, Danny. My absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So we also have Kevin Fenimore, who is a professor, academic consultant, and head of department of all British programs that focus on games, animation, visual effects, and film production at EBEC. Good evening, Kevin. Good evening. We also have Radina Nadalcheva, professor and assistant program leader for the British Digital Animation Programs. Rodina is also the program leader for the pre-foundation in computer graphics here at EBEC. Hello, Rodina. Welcome Hi. to our live. Hello. Thank you. And we also count with the presence of Anna, who is finalizing our year zero computer graphics at the moment. Welcome, Anna. <laughs> Hi. So good to be here. Thank you. Great. So, Danny, tell us a little bit about the University of Hertfordshire. By all means, I'd be delighted to. So if I just share my screen here. Oh, sorry, one second, please. Okay, so uh, welcome uh, to the short presentation about the University of Hertfordshire. My name is uh, Danny Graydon. I am an academic uh, for screen at the School of Creative Arts uh, at the University of Hertfordshire, where I've now uh, been for 10 years. I've taught on all four of the screen degrees and predominantly on the model design and digital animation uh, degree pathways. One of my jobs is as collaborative partnership leader for uh, EBAC in Sao Paulo, of course. And what that involves is that I manage the link between the University of Hertfordshire and EBAC, uh, making sure that the uh, two degree courses that EBAC runs, which is digital animation and graphics design and illustration, are run uh, the way that we do in uh, the UK, and making sure that there is a complete integrity of uh, delivery of teaching. So the course that we run uh, uh, for digital animation, for example, in the UK is exactly the same as the one that students will be receiving in uh, Sao Paulo. 
To give you an idea about the University of Hertfordshire, it was, uh, was set up in 1952 uh, as originally the Hatfield Technical College. Hatfield is a town in Hertfordshire about 20 miles north of London. And in 1992, it received uh, university status. And at this point in 2020, U uh, University of Hertfordshire is one of the top 100 universities in the UK. There are over two campuses. Uh, it has world-class facilities, uh, such as uh, sports, entertainment facilities. We have um, two very large uh, libraries with up to the date uh, and a high-end computing and software systems for use on many of the courses within the university of which there are eight schools comprising uh, over 27,500 students. Obviously, I mentioned that we are very close uh, to London and indeed uh, the film industry hubs in Buckinghamshire, which is the next county to us. And what that ensures is in terms of digital animation that we are near to the close to the hub of uh, the animation industry within this country. The campuses that we have are for a very dynamic uh, university life for students, having hundreds of societies and clubs, and we are very much consider ourselves to be a 24 hour a day campus. And so uh, enterprising students who wish to study all night long can do so in our learning resource centers on both campuses. Most importantly, of course, is that uh, two years ago in 2018, we received the uh, Teaching Excellence Framework, the gold award for that, which means that we are among the best rated in the country for university higher education teaching. Now, the digital animation program is, uh, we're very proud to say, one of the very best in the world. We have seen, received numerous awards uh, for um, our work that our students do on a yearly basis. Now, in this um, degree, for which I've worked on for the past 10 years, we have four distinct pathways for 3D, uh, 2D, games art and design, and then VFX for film and television. These courses are uh, practice dominated. So 75% of the course is going to be uh, working on developing your technical and practical skills, uh, such as live drawing, learning uh, specific programs, uh, such as Maya and Blender. And 25% of the course is learning about uh, critical and contextual studies. So understanding where the history of your art, uh, where it came from, how it proceeds. And, so, and from that, the students can get a very good idea of where their art can go via their own creativity, their own ideas, and really make sure that they are all set for entering the world of employment upon graduation after three years with us at the university. We pride ourselves on having a team of uh, lecturers and academics who are very much grounded in significant industry experience. Our practice-based tutors have had extensive 3D and 2D and games experience in television, film, um, and the games industry, including very, very high profile works such as The Hobbit, Tintin, the Harry Potter series, uh, Thor, uh, Man of Steel, Doctor Who, many, many different types of projects. And our lecturers are award winning as well, uh, not only in external industry awards, but also UH based awards where we have been nominated for team of the year and a number of us have been uh, nominated and indeed received tutor of the year. The student prospects at the University of Hertfordshire on the digital animation degree are very high indeed. Uh, most of our graduates have been employed by over 300 companies worldwide, including such globally esteemed likes as Industrial Light and Magic, Aardman, uh, Disney, Cinesite, Double Negative, and many, many others. And our graduates will have worked while they are with us studying on such high profile films as Star Wars, Gravity, Inception, Avatar. So you are getting experience on world-class productions while you are with us and you can expect to enter the industry and be working on such projects immediately. We are very proud that we have gained significant uh, critical acclaim around the world and in such places as 3D World Magazine, we are now routinely acclaimed as one of the very best 
uh, VFX courses in the world. And indeed, in terms of a games art design, we are currently rated as the best in the world. The rookies, of which we have scored very, very highly in recent years, uh, have placed us as one of the best visual effects schools in the world. And most recently in the rookies for 2020, which the results of which were released uh, a few weeks ago, we were awarded a uh, film of the year for one of our digital animation works, which we are incredibly proud of. We uh, keep receiving these awards, which is absolutely wonderful and only reaffirms our position on the world stage. And the important thing to remember is that the global reputation that we have accrued over the years is very much shared with EBAC. As the CPL for uh, EBAC, I very much consider that the school is part of the reputation that we have garnered over the years. We are Screen Skills approved, which makes us one of the best animation courses in the UK. And certainly that the uh, uh, facilities and uh, the skills that we bring forward into our teaching is something that we very much share with tutors at EBAC to make sure that you are getting the same level of uh, competency and skill and experience that you, uh, our students are receiving in the UK. We are Side FX approved, which is a Houdini certified school. There's only one of uh, two of these in the UK, which is again, something we're very, very proud of. We are Tiger approved, which is, makes us the best games art course in the UK. And as just mentioned, makes us uh, uh, one of the best games art schools in the world. We are Select approved, one of the best film schools in the world. So as you can uh, hopefully appreciate, we are very, very highly rated uh, all across the world and our graduates will have the ability to work in any country in the world where there is a functioning and pervasive uh, animation industry. Certainly a degree from uh, the University of Hertfordshire is an excellent calling card for your maneuvers within the industry moving forward. AnimationCareerReview.com places us in the top animation schools and colleges uh, to study in Europe. And certainly many industry titans have enormously good things to say about us. We have great contacts with the industry and they are routinely involved with us and our students coming to give talks. And John Laws, the head of Art at Frontier says that the University of Hertfordshire is one of the few universities teaching the correct fundamental skills required by the games industry. You have the right mix of traditional theory and cutting edge digital art creation and understand that the tech is a tool rather than the end in itself. I'm impressed. Aidan Gibbons, the VFX supervisor and director at The Mill in central London, says that the University of Hertfordshire's visual effects work really impressed us on the live projects we ran with them we feel that their students are the ones to watch at graduation time. Our employment rates are high. Typically courses uh, are with screen skills accreditation have an average of 30% employment in the animation industry. We typically expect to have between 50 and 60% of our graduates will get hired immediately into the industry, which is twice that rating. Uh, so we are certainly very, very proud of the fact that our uh, our graduates are very highly prized and more often than not, before they even graduate the course, they have been snapped up by uh, many uh, world-class companies at our film day, which occurs at the end of the academic year, in which our final student projects are shown off live to uh, not only industry people, but also to uh, audiences around the world. Certainly uh, getting a British education uh, in the kind of course that we offer is something that I think is immeasurably valuable to any prospective student. What we do at the University of Hertfordshire is not only give you the correct technical skills and making sure that you have a correct uh, and effective contextual understanding of your art, we make sure that by the time that you leave us at the University of Hertfordshire, you are going to be a rounded and measured professional who will be immediately ready for entering the world of employment and you will be an artist, uh, making sure that you can thrive within the industry and achieve everything that you have dreamt about uh, working within the animation industry, the games industry or the VFX industry. So I very much uh, recommend that uh, the course that you will learn at EBAC is certainly one that is identical to what we provide in the UK. 
and I cannot recommend it enough. EVAC is a wonderful school and I very much enjoy working with them on a routine basis. Thank you very much. Thank you, Danny. Okay. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. So, Kevin, uh, hello. What can, hello. What can prospect students expect from our courses in animation, audiovisual, and games? Well, I'll jump into a PowerPoint in a minute just to outline a number of different things. Uh, obviously, I've been in Brazil for the last three years, uh, well, two and a half years. Um, you know, I've experienced what Brazil is like. I've experienced what the industry is like. I've connected with all of the production companies. And obviously we still have our links with the UK industry and with all the software providers and all the, those variables. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's an amazing thing that's going on right now in Brazil. UH are super supportive with everything that we're doing. Um, you know, the fact that we are able to deliver these programs in Brazil to Brazilians and other international students, by the way, we do have students from other Latin American countries. We even have uh, one of one of uh, uh, our level sixes is graduating at the end of this year. So that's our first graduates is from Tunisia, decided to come and stay here and he's doing very well, already employed in Brazil uh, by a company called Hype Studios, working on Netflix shows, um, plus a number of other game stuff. Uh, and I've actually hired him myself for my consulting company as well. So uh, yeah, things are very, very cool in Brazil. Um, and the link with with UH has been uh, a pleasure to have. Uh, you know, it's been really interesting coming from working in a number of institutes in Brazil, uh, in the UK. Um, and when you move out here as a British academic, it's really strange the first kind of couple of months you're here uh, in Brazil. Um, but that link is is really supportive, and, and you, you kind of feel like you have two homes: Brazil and England. You know, so and UH uh, especially. You know, so thank you, Danny. And I might be able to skip a couple of my slides because if, if you've ever been to come and see me at any open days, you know, I've got a lot to say uh, often. Um, so uh, some cool stuff that was in, in those slides and uh, yeah, we'll see uh, what goes on. So let me just uh, share my screen one moment. Get the right one. You see that okay, Helena? Yeah, all good. Okay, I need to switch my screens. One second, do apologize about this. What's the problem when you have three screens? When you're a computer graphics artist, uh, you often end up having multiple screens. You know, I've got four screens in front of me right now. Um, <laughs> so give me one moment, guys, so I can just uh, switch to uh, duplicate it instead of extending. Or else we end up with all a whole mess of things going on. Great. All right, so welcome everybody. I'm Kevin Fenimore, um, as been introduced by Helena. Um, I kind of run the audio, visual and computer graphics elements to EBAC. So, not just the British programs, but also, uh, you know, we've created a lot of other programs that are complementary um, and sit alongside the British programs. So CPD programs, essentially, continued professional development courses. So tonight I'm going to be speaking to you about a number of things and I'll try to be as quick as possible because we've all got things to do, of course. So I'm going to be speaking about a little bit of uh, industry, both UK and uh, Brazil, uh, education, teaching and learning. Uh, research, because that's something that uh, the, the UK is very strong on and it informs everything we do within what we teach and what we do. Um, and of course, careers and graduate destinations and some other bits and bobs. So again, I'm Kevin. I'm the head of the department for audiovisual and computer graphics. I'm a principal lecturer, I'm a program leader, and I'm an academic consultant. So uh, currently, in terms of academic consulting, I'm also working for another other a number of other uh Brazilian universities for um, for business actually and, and uh, creative industries. So um, some cool stuff going on there. Basically, what I've been doing for my career is graduating students into amazing jobs. This is me at my last university before coming to Brazil, University of Bradford, in my amazing motion capture studio uh, with some amazing students that have gone on to do amazing things and work at some of the most amazing companies globally. 
And I think that's the word I really want to stress here. This is a global industry. This is not an English industry, a Brazilian industry. Um, what we do is global. You see people and ex-students of mine, you know, traveling around the world, different jobs, different places uh, and high salaries. Um, so that comes often from, um, I, I'd like to say that it's, it'd be nice to say that, you know, I feel that I am responsible for, for their growth, but realistically, you know, the students all do such an amazing job and they do so well with their projects, they get jobs, but we are the commanders of their education. And that, in my opinion, comes from links with industry. As uh, Danny stated, you know, the links that UH have with the industries in and around London and being so close to London, it's, you know, an amazing thing to have. Since coming to Brazil, I've had to do the same. I've had to change from being somebody in England that's connected to all these different industries and different companies to essentially establishing myself within Brazil. Um, and I've done that, you know, luckily I had some great people around me when I was, uh, when I first arrived in Brazil, Malu, especially, which is uh, the person on your, on your right, second right in. And this is uh, myself talking at the British council about games, animation, visual effects, the industries here uh, in Sao Paulo. And on the right is when we invited the, the uh, guys from Netflix America after the Netflix summit that we were invited to, to come and speak round table about education, about what their needs are. Um, I obviously had my hair down on that day, sat on a, on a, a nice little uh, chair in, in our amazing library. Um, but those are the things that I think are core to creating great courses, to making sure things are fit for purpose. Um, you connect with the industry, you ask questions, you're not scared to think about what's next, you do future scoping, okay? Those are the, the crucial elements that I feel that, that I've brought from England to Brazil's market for education um, and hopefully helped with uh, our industries. And our industries are vast. I mean, you all know them, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's expansive. Um, you know, there's a lot of money going on and it's a really fun place to be, whether it's in uh, games, animation, visual effects, film, um, you know, or all the little level variables that come out of those things. So, you know, and another part of that is having the team there. Every single person we have that teaches for me at EBAC, all of my lovely staff, they are all in industry. They either are working half a week in EBAC and half a week in industry, or they're working in the mornings, or they're coming and doing hours. You know, every single person that teaches is cutting edge and delivering in Brazil. And obviously we have a number of people globally that you know, Skype in and talk, especially ex-students of mine. Um, you know, but one of the cool things with this industry, I feel, is that it's a creative technical mix. You know, um, myself, I, I class myself as more of a scientist than an artist. If you gave me a, a pencil, I would struggle to give you something good. You know, uh, you give me a computer, you give me some maths, you give me some programming, I'll, I'll you know, be able to pull some stuff out of, uh, out of my hat. Um, and I think the industry knows that. And, and, you know, and that's what's been embraced by everybody. And that's, I think, why UH do so well, because they embrace that. Um, for example, every single student that comes in through, through EBAC has to get a grips with anatomy, even if they are technical, because no understanding artistic elements reinforces the technical, okay? Um, you know, if you want to create something like this, yeah, you can you can put in a bunch of physics into Houdini um, or uh, but you still need to be able to texture. It. You need to look development. You need to, you know, the lighting to be correct. You know, there's there's art and, and, and technology fused. Um, and one film, I know it's a bit old, guys, but this has always been had a special place in my heart for how much art and technology is pushed in um, Interstellar. You know, if you look at uh, Double Negative, which is, uh, you know, a company in London, probably one of the one of the biggest global visual effects companies in the world. They actually have a chief scientist uh, on staff, you know, and they work very closely. And you can go and check this out if you if you will. Uh, TEDx talk by Paul Franklin talking about this. You know, it's reliant upon each other. Art and technology have to coexist. That's the only way that we've got to the place that we're at right now. Okay, but sometimes it's clunky. This is me and some students in my last university. You know, sometimes you have to think outside the box. Uh, luckily, I'm a, a, a rock climb, so we, we managed to rig some stuff out for, for a Spider-Man shot. Um, but if you look at the actual industry and, and how things are going, it's not the magic you see when you see a film 
is down to hard work, ingenuity, um, and, and people having a dream and the vision and artistic flair that enables that, okay? And it must be really hard for the actors and, and you know, I'm sure they get used to it. Um, you know, and there's loads of stories of people not being used to it. I know on the, the um, uh, Hobbit, Ian McEwan cried because he wasn't used to this kind of acting, apparently. So again, UK, we've been doing this for a long time. We've been educating people, um, not just in art design, computer graphics, visual effects, etc. cetera, um, but we are extremely old in our education. You know, um, Oxford, for example, is 200 years uh, older than the Aztecs. Uh, that's how long the education, uh, you know, has been going on in England. And, and, you know, we, even though we're such a small island, we represent such a, a huge hub for research mobility um, and citations and et cetera. So all of us that are academics, we are research active. Um, and we have many innovations that we, you know, adopt and, and we're constantly trying to think outside the box and think what's next, but we don't just do this arbitrarily. We're always, everything we do is, is research informed, okay? We, we are constantly trying to evolve our teaching, our learning, and all of our methodologies. Um, you know, inspire innovation, learn and share what is possible, support and develop, uh, support the development of excellent uh, educational experiences for students. That's UH's motto, or at least it was last time I checked. And I agree with that. And that's what we're trying to bring to Brazil and to, to EBAC. And I think we've done well, especially considering what UH will be doing in the rookies and, and hopefully will have some of that as well when, when we get our first graduates at the end of next year. Um, it's not just about universities doing what they like. We have quality assurance in place, the QAA. Um, you know, they keep things on point. Uh, they make sure that things align with skills priorities, interests of students, uh, making sure the stakeholders have input into courses. Now I've made and built in the UK, I created three Bachelor of Science degrees for Bradford. Since coming to Brazil, I've created a number of courses for EBAC. Um, you know, you have a many, a, a huge tick box to go through to be able to create a course. It takes a year plus to, to be able to create something from scratch, you know, and, and these are the things that we have to adhere to. OK, um, and there's other things that go on inside the UK. I mean, I'll bring up a couple of things. Obviously, you've got the uh, Higher Education uh, Funding Council for England, HEFKE. Um, then there's other smaller, um, the AIM Awards, for example, they do foundation diplomas, etc. But the cool thing about the AIM Awards was it was created uh, based off of a next gen report, which was uh, with Nesta created by Alex Hope and uh, Ian Livingston. Alex Hope is one of the guys who created Double Negative. Ian Livingston is IDOS. And they actually made a census of the whole industry, what's missing from education, what the companies need, you know, what they should be doing to, to create a better future for our industries. And they had a lasting, uh, you know, um, a lasting uh, hit with that because it ended up with policies going to the government from early years all the way up to university check that out you can go check the next gen report by nesta it's an amazing read um and some of the stuff i've built completely around this because i uh, share exactly what what they what they're trying to push across with this kind of research okay and it's making the impossible possible by um essentially future scoping identifying gaps creating educational uh, education based on the gaps and then creating the educational platforms um and it's not that it's perfect you have to go around and around to get it perfect but we've done that in the uk for many many years um, we've made something uh, amazing in terms of, in my opinion, um, film, screen, games, etc., for, for education. Um, you know, and, and there's other companies such as Screen Skills, which uh, Danny mentioned earlier. And um, if you just look at what their five strategic points are and see if you disagree with this, you know, enhancing provision, attracting and cultivating talent, driving diversity, building bridges, and professional development. You know, if that doesn't strike me as something that's going to grow an industry um, and create jobs, I don't know what will. Um, and that's why you'll see that most of the people that are coming through the UK do go to university. They, uh, whether it's undergraduate, postgraduate um, or, or foundation, etc. You know, many that are in industry have been to university and they've reaped what they've sowed for that. OK. You can see some of the skills shortages we've got going forward, you know, future skills gaps, technical, um, you know, software, business skills, sales and marketing skills. And the reason I'm bringing those metrics in is because 
our industries are not just about software or about drawing or about any of those elements. And we teach this at EBAC, especially on the year zero. And I'll get to the year zero shortly. What I want to just quickly glance over, because this is this is the topics that you would literally speak, uh, you know, two hours about, um, you know, Carl Rogers and you'd speak about Maslow, etc. Um, but we try to uh, make sure that the student is the center of every single classroom, the center of their world. OK, student centered learning is by far the best way for people to experience and to learn. Um, we also often think about how we can teach higher order thinking skills, um, obviously starting at low points. Um, but Bloom's taxonomy is something that is constantly in our uh, in our framework when we're developing curriculum or designing classrooms. OK, um, and of course, if you only tool you have as a hammer, you're going to see everything's a nail. Uh, Maslow is another huge element to, to how we do things. It's all about motivation, placing people in the right uh, area, the right um, environment. OK, so making sure things are psychologically good, safe. People belong to, to a group. There's a steam going around, whether it's a, uh, a steam that's won or rewarded or whether it's just uh, looking at portfolios, whether it's even just a steam coming from critique. You know, bad, you can get esteem that's, that's bad uh, in, in a sense of people selling you something that, you know, you may be negative, but it's a positive because you'll end up learning from that and you'll end up being self, uh, you'll end up in, in a self-actualization position. OK, um, and it's all about essentially going through these aspects of us being facilitators and potentiators um, and, and trying to get to a stage of autogogy um, and, and metagogical elements to teaching and learning you know pedagogy is an education it's great of course it's the, the the soul of everything but we've evolved from that we don't have students that just sit in a classroom and get told what to do we it, it, you know we we try and spark something in them that gets them to be uh, meta motivational essentially um self-directed independent learners and you'll see that through your study from pre-foundation all the way to year zero to BA and even on the BA when you go from level four to level six which is your three years four five six um, by the end you'll be working on a lot of self-directed and interdependent um, elements to your education guided by us academics and industry and essentially it leads to thinking about thinking metacognition going around and around in circles but every time you do a circle you come out as a stronger circle essentially um, because this never ends, you know, and even people like myself and Danny, you know, we're still in this this world of metacognition where you're constantly evolving um, over time and become an independent learner, you know, and when that happens, um, you'll become problem solvers, you'll be able to think by yourself, you know, your, your strengths will, will grow, uh, you'll alleviate weaknesses, um, effective work, uh, working effectively with other people. Um, you know, this is the stuff that the industry want and they're voicing this, they're saying, we need people who can do this. Um, and that is what we teach. It's not just about software, hardware, art skills. We teach all of the soft skills alongside it. Um, I wanna just glance on Brazil really quickly as well. Um, you know, I've been living in Brazil for, for three years. I, I love Brazil. Um, you know, I, I love the people. I've got so many great friends here. Uh, the food's amazing, etc. You know, my, my Portuguese is muito fraco, so sorry I have to speak in, in English. Um, you know, but there are challenges in Brazil. We all know that. Um, you know, productivity has not grown that much. Innovation hasn't grown that much. If you look at other BRIC countries, um, you know, 1.3%, um, you know, from 1990 to, to 2018. Um, and I think after the research, I mean, this is the McKinsey and Company's Brazilian Digit Report. Again, go check it out. Everything I'm saying is, is backed up by research and you can see the metrics. Um, go read for yourself, you know, but people are spending more time in school, but it's not changing the productivity the, the, or, or the innovation. Okay, so more and more people are spending longer times but things aren't working out in terms of GDP. Um, and obviously it, it depends on industries, et cetera. Um, the other part of that is though that very little students from Brazil go abroad. Now I know a number of Brazilians that are abroad right now studying for masters, et cetera. But what we've essentially done is rather than students having to go outside of Brazil, I um, mean, you know, I'm, I'm 
English, so I'm always keeping an eye on the, on the currency exchanges, etc. You know, it's hard to, to travel outside of, of Brazil to go to study. It's expensive. What we've done is we've enabled students to be able to study British education inside of Sao Paulo, inside of Brazil, um, and we're doing a very good job of it. Um, it's about adaptive education, essentially. Essentially, you know, we have great employability in terms of even the students that are currently studying with us are doing well in terms of, um, you know, jobs. Um, you know, we're, we're making sure that we have the right industry partnerships um, and we're helping the students grow. OK, um, because it's a huge industry here, you know, two. 200,000 creative businesses, a million creative jobs. You know, the taxes, are, it's really good for the taxes. 43.7 billion US for the creative economy by 2021. Now, I just need to put that in that that was before COVID. Um, so the numbers might change. Eighth largest games market, 4.6 annual growth. You know, creativity accounts for 2.64 GDP. Sorry to read the numbers out, but every time I look at these, these figures, it excites me and it makes me believe that Brazil... Uh, is a world player. Um, you know, my experience of working with other Brazilian companies on certain things with my consulting, you know, you just have to look at these maps. Uh, this is Sao Paulo. You can scroll in, uh, you know, and from where EBAC is, you can throw a stone in any direction. You're going to hit a production company and we know them all. Um, you know, myself especially, um, that's what we do. And not just that, our global partners in terms of software, we teach everything that is relevant. Um, and we adapt, you know, even uh, we're even teaching things that no other, you know, not many other universities worldwide are teaching, such as Flix, which is a foundry product. And we're very lucky with our relationship that they allowed us to have that. You know, it's not something you can literally go on to the website and buy anyway. You know, it's it, yeah. Come and speak to us. and We will get through all of that. And again, our partnerships, uh, you know, we've got some great partnerships with local companies, global companies. Um, and just to just to highlight on the research informed teaching, what I mean by that is that, you know, we need to uh, inform our students on how to move around the educational uh, provisions and how to um, essentially to, to move forward year by year by year. What a lot of students don't understand before they come to, to a university platform that's British is that at least a third of your degree will be research. It will be writing, okay? It will be looking at all the different variables that are around you inside of your space and outside um, and how you can bring those into your academic being, okay? So whether it's led oriented, tutored, and hopefully eventually research-based learning um, where the students are, you know, they learn as researchers, which is essentially what I am and what Danny is and what academics are, you know, we're constantly learning, constantly researching and we grow from that um you know and and that was something that you know i was doing a lot of when i was living in england that's me and me messing around with lidar scanners uh you know i had great facilities for uh motion capture again me and me messing around with uh different types of capture suits but you know to put it in, in a play that might seem really cool or it might seem really fun um you know getting the, all these motion capture things you've seen in the film um two different types of suits inertial and camera based um but what I was mainly doing there was nothing to do with animation. Um, what I was actually doing when I was playing around with all that and researching to that was looking at how I can use it for computed tomography scanning. So, and, and um, you know, uh, looking at ways to, to work with medicine, essentially. And a lot of the stuff with that, with, with our radiology that we were working with, you know, we ended up getting into the biggest radiology conference in the world for, for training doctors, you know, so, what I'm trying to get to is that, yeah, the industries are really, you know, expansive and contracting and, and you've got so much scope when you study these kind of uh, um, courses that it's not bound by entertainment. You can do anything you want to do when you know what you want to do uh, or, it's, you know, techniques, skill sets, etc. You can port them over into di many different variables. And we're seeing that a lot now with, you know, the games industry and the film industry becoming kind of more interconnected because of virtual production. Um, and there I was, uh, the healthcare technology with my motion capture suit, etc. cetera. Um, courses. We've created a lot of courses in the last couple of years at EBAC. Um, and it's not that we, we, we obviously have the UK uh, UH link um, 
And UK UH Link was, is, of course, we mimic their programs. They're valid, we're validated by them. Um, and although, you know, I've got a University of Bradford thing on here, just going to highlight some of the uh, programs I developed uh, myself. I, I thought up these programs, I initiated them and I built them for uh, Bradford with a big team, a very strong team. Um, you know, but we, before coming to Brazil, I was making Bachelor of Science degrees in film and visual effects technology, uh, animation. Uh, which is BA and the first of its kind in, in the world, BSc in virtual and augmented reality. Um, obviously, I've got a passion for curriculum design. I like being on the fringe. I like to create new cutting edge courses. And we've done so uh, since living in Brazil and since working with EBAC. Uh, we built the Computer Style Graphical Fundamentos. Okay. Um, we built the Audiovisual Fundamentos. We built the Preparatorio para Graduação Computer Style Graphical. Um, you know, Hey, uh, producing uh, course, uh, uh, year zero in computer graphics and film production, which has a big place in my heart because this was a contract with students where this is an experimental course. Um, and I'll kind of go into this slightly because I, I don't want to take too much time up. But, you know, then we also had an amazing festival that we put together called Fix It in Post, where we brought all of the industry to EBAC for 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 essentially a session that was sponsored by the foundry and side effects um so huge companies sponsoring this you know and it was amazing to see it was political it was uh, instructional um you know it was fun um and it was an amazing networking event for everybody okay um so there what we essentially offer at ebac is preparatory courses year zero courses graduation courses cpd courses and industry programs okay and maybe that pyramid is slightly off some of them are you know some cpd courses of fundamentos etc um but what i want to talk about is the british programs because that's what you're here for um so our preparatory programs which uh, uh, uh radina uh, runs um essentially teaches everything about industry software and hardware art design portfolio show it's a real mix you get a chance to test everything out you get to play with all the different um elements to to everything that happens within our industries the year zero in film, uh, film and, and computer graphics. Um, this was a, 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 a essentially a program that I developed after seeing uh, other courses, other foundation courses, and other year zero courses globally, and just thinking this isn't enough. It's not enough. We need to teach people how to a uh, if they want to go to university and they want to continue their academia uh, in in academia, uh, how to be better at research and how to be better at being independent. On the other side. We still we wanted to make a, a, a platform at eBAC that could give students who don't want to go through the whole scope of a four year program. So foundation to to the end of BA, a way to get into industry. So what we did, um, my, my, my consultant company in eBAC, we created the, the year zero, which runs on a pipeline pedagogy, essentially. And we've called it Inception Studies just for a bit of fun, uh, you know, the Inception film. Um, but essentially it works and mimics industry. They work for one year on one film. Um, and they go through all the stages, pre-production, production, production uh, post-production, um, with loads of people from industry coming in and teaching them all about uh, what's good, what's not. Um, the other element to that is the pressure's on because you have to form your, uh, your own production company for one year. And we're running this now. We're recruiting for this right now. Uh, you know, spaces are, are filling up and we're limited on how many we can fit on this because we need to make like a boutique essentially a boutique production company so we're kind of limited to you know 30 30 people um so make sure you get in contact if you're interested in this one um but the pipeline pedagogy uh, which is the term that i coined for this um essentially just follows industry pipelines so the students that have now completed this i'm more than sure and you'll hear from one soon anna um her experiences on this 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 platform this program um it's challenging it is not for the the you know faint-hearted kind of thing it's it's a real simulation of an industry pipeline you know um you have an executive producer etc so lastly you know you can go from zero to hero um at ebac you know we offer everything from foundation all the way up from pre-foundation all the way up to graduating on a british program having a university of hertfordshire degree uh, certificate um you know and some of my previous, because we were just, you know, graduating our last, uh, our, our first uh, students we got in, that will be graduating at the end of this year. So I'm just going to show you a couple of my previous um, students who have done very well now. Mihai Stan is working at DNEG, done loads of stuff on Netflix, etc. Um, Abhinav Gul, 
Um, you know, this guy's just just been made a bit of a, a jump up in, in what he does at CD Projekt Red. So he's been working on The Witcher and all these different games, you know, and I'm not trying to show them off as, a, as an example of um, success. These guys, every time I have a conversation with them and I speak to them very regularly, they're just super happy in their job. They love what they do. They are, and they're doing well monetarily. I know I'm saying it, it's not about money, but they're doing very well. You know, it's good for them. Um, you know, so thank you. Um, and we hope to see you at EBAC soon. Cheers. Wow, that was great, Kevin. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. So let's continue with, with Rosina. Rosina, would you like to share with us your insights about teaching and learning at EBAC? Yes, of course. Thank you, Helena. I will just share my screen as well. I have a few slides, not as many as <laughs> Kevin. But a, a few slides for sure. Um, okay, hi everyone. My name is Regina. Um, I already got introduced. The main thing I want to talk to you today is portfolio and showreel preparation. Uh, even though I'm the program leader for our pre-foundation uh, course in CG, which I will mention a couple of things about. The main thing I do on these open days is try to educate people and give them a little more insights in what a showroom is, what a portfolio is, and why you need it. Um, before we do that, I will just quickly show you where I'm actually coming from, if that makes sense. Essentially, my academic journey started in the University of Bradford in England where I got my Bachelor of Science in Computer Animation and VFX. So this is where I studied my BA program. Later I got my PGCHE or my certificate for teaching in higher education essentially in the new University of Falmouth and then later I ended up in the University of um, EBAC essentially where I've been working for two years now. Um, as you know, I am, a, I am the assistant program leader and a lecturer for our BA programs in digital animation, uh, the programs that Kevin just outlined for you. And something very important that you should all uh, know is what you need to enter these programs, which is a showroom and portfolio. Before I actually start outlining these things, I want to share something with you that I'm really proud of. And this is the pre-foundation course that just finished. We, we run it once a year. It starts in March. It's a five, five months long course. It just finished. And I just want to share some of the work that um, my students did in only five months. These are students um, that have never touched any software, any um, any hardware, most of them are very, very new to this world and they managed to create this amazing work in only five um, months. So if you are someone who doesn't know where you want to end up, whether you're interested in 2D or 3D or games or VFX, this course is probably one of the best things that you can do in terms of trying out everything and then making up your mind uh, after you get a taste of all of these industries, essentially. Um, okay, again, you will be able to, if you go to EBAC's website, you will be able to check out the show rules that we have <clears throat> and student work as well. Okay, so portfolio and show rule preparation. Um, these two are very important. They go hand in hand together. And before I show you some examples and some good practices to keep in mind when you're preparing your showreels and portfolios is to understand why do you need it. Many students coming to open days, they don't realize why do I need a portfolio? Why do I need a showreel? And essentially this is your business card. Your portfolio, you will use this to enter any further or higher education. You will use this portfolio to enter jobs in industry. Same with your showreel. It has to be dynamic, it has to be engaging, it has to show your best work. So this is why um, we put so much effort into 
helping you create your portfolios and showrooms to the best standards to to be able to enter into really good jobs in the industry after you after you finish your course but you also need them to enter our BA courses or ES zeros the first thing I will outline for you is uh, portfolios and what you see is um, essentially work from our students I will just mention some good practices to keep in mind when you are creating your own portfolios the main thing we're looking for in a portfolio is um, you experimenting with colors, with textures, with materials. We want to see that you try everything. We want, even if you don't feel comfortable with certain materials, say you don't feel comfortable with um, oil paints, for example, we want to see that you try. So when you're creating your portfolio, when, you, when you're putting all this work you have together, keep in mind, um, we want to see a variety of colors, variety of materials, um, only put your best work. It doesn't have to be 50 pieces, it can be 10, but they have to be the best pieces you have, the things you're most proud of. So um, quantity, no, quality over quantity. Okay, um, another thing that we really want you to understand is life drawing and why we need it. Students often struggle to understand why do they need to do so much live drawing because we um, we teach a lot of live drawing on each year on the first second and third year of your BA you will always have art classes where you have live drawing um, and students who are often more tech oriented say um, students who are more interested in VFX and uh, games and, and 3D modeling for example they struggle to understand at first, why do they need to do all this um, anatomy drawings? And essentially it gives you, it teaches you about weight, about structure, about uh, the pose, the, the muscle structure, the bone structure. And this will be very, very helpful for you in your 3D studies. When you go into Maya, for example, a software that we use very often. And when you start modeling a uh, human body, all that you learn in your art classes will come in handy because you will understand better. Another thing we are looking for, mainly if you are interested in animation, is movement. And you can um, draw movement. If you are interested in um, character design, we would like to see um, characters from essentially all points of view. So if say you have a very interesting character that you have created, a very appealing character, try to draw it from uh, front, back, side, three quarters view, just so we understand that you know uh, about the volume of this character and how this character fits in its own environment. Okay. Um, and I think lastly, for the portfolios, I want to mention another thing. Again, your portfolio will be different depending on what you're mainly interested in. That's why I'm trying to um, cover all the pathways we have. But if you are interested in 2D or 3D animation or character development, um, we want to see expressions. We want to see that you are experimenting with um, facial expressions and different characters and how you can animate eyebrows and, and hair to, to speak your story. So think about that as well when you're creating your portfolio. Okay, and we can jump on to showreels. All right. Um, now you, how should I say that? No matter what your interests are, even if you are a 2D artist, 3D artist, VFX or uh, games, you should always create a showreel. Even if most of the work in that showreel is already in your portfolio, it is often easier for the viewer to, to see it and go through it and be more engaged. One of the main things that you need to keep in mind about your showreel is the length. Um, it shouldn't be long. Don't make a five minute long uh, showreel. Think about your employer, your future employer. Almost no one will sit and watch a five minute long showreel when there's a hundred candidates for the same job. So make your showreel short. One minute is perfect depending on the amount of work you have, of course, one minute is the golden length. 
keep in mind that you should start always you put your best work always so start with the best work and finish with the best work so that you you have this overall feel of, of goodness in your in your showreel again your showreel will be very different depending on again what your pathway is what you're interested in if you're more of a 2d artist 2d animator then your showreel will have more 2d work um so uh, as you see on the screen, we want to see walk cycles, we want to see expressions, we want to see that you follow the 12 rules of animation, um, which of course we teach at EBAC. Um, that's for 2D. If you're interested in characters, again, same thing as the portfolio, we want to see that character from the front, from the back, from the side, just so we get this um, feel of pose, weight and structure. Um, if you're a VFX character, a character student, or if you're interested in VFX, um, there's a few things that we're looking for. If you already have created some VFX shots, if you have already played with some um, VFX software, we want to see breakdowns. So if you have created a shot uh, like the top left one, for example, where you have this blue screen on the background and you have removed it and replaced the environment, and then some color grading, show us the process. This is very important. Uh, don't just show us the final result. We want to know what you have done. Show us the process you, you have gone through. And the other very important thing for 3D orientated students is photography, uh, for VFX oriented students, sorry. So if you are interested in VFX, we expect from, from you to see a photography um, gallery, uh, photographies, that you have done using different lightning and, and thinking in, in that area. Um, and lastly, for games, game students, all of the previous things I mentioned about your showreel apply. You can also think about vehicles, you can think about props. These are very, very important things that go on to, into a game as well as environments. So think about what you are interested in. And, and make your showroom more concentrated in that area if you already know what you are interested in. If you don't, then make your showroom more of a generalist showroom and, and show us your best work in general. Okay, um, now I think I have some more time. Yes, I do. I would like to show you our latest um, showreel that we have from our students level four and five on games animation and VFX. Um, you can go and see this um, showreel on our website. It, it has some music on the background, but I will just talk through it a little bit. Um, essentially, this is a combination of the best work we have from just this last semester. Every semester we create a new showreel to showcase our students' work. This piece, for example, a VFX production shot is very interesting. A student did it um, by himself. So there's lots of elements that went into the space, um, lots of VFX, lots of modeling, lots of uh, um, rendering and lightning. So you can, you can see uh, that we, this is essentially what we want to see from a showreel. Uh, we want to see breakdowns, we want to see just a variety of um, elements that showcase your skills, essentially. Okay, again, I'm not going to play this to the end because it's um, quite long, but if you would like to see this whole, you can go and look at it on our website. Okay, but mainly I just want to finish with this and say that the showreel and your portfolio is the most important thing that we're looking at when you are applying um, onto our BA programs and on our year zero. So if you're unsure about your showreel and, and not so sure about your portfolio, don't hesitate to contact us and we can always have a look and give you advice and give you feedback. And you can always rely on us to, to tell you how you can improve yourself, okay? We also have a portfolio and showreel um, course that helps you take your work that you have already done and structure it in a better way, a more presentable way. So you can also look at that. But again, depending on your case, uh, feel free to contact us, contact me, 
and you will always get some um, feedback. They will help you a lot, okay? All right, thank you. Thank you, Regina, that was great. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, Anna, Anna has something to show to us about your latest production, right, in the year's Europe. Yeah, so essentially what I had to do was uh, share my portfolio and also I wanted to talk like from a student's perspective to future students. So yeah, I'm going to try to share my screen and if the, the connection becomes too unstable, I'll have to like shut down my camera. So hopefully everything goes well, but I'm sorry if it doesn't, <laughs> but yeah. Can you, can you see it? <laughs> I, I think it's okay. Yes, it's great. Yes, it's great. Okay, so yeah, my name's Anna and this is my portfolio. So yeah, <laughs> I'm so nervous, please don't be gentle. <laughs> so yeah, this is basically what I did. Um, I kind of separated it into some projects that I'm working on. Uh, so this is our year zero project. This is a uh, game I'm working on, my 3D creations, my concept art, the illustrations I make and some studies. So yeah. Uh, and some things that I wanted to point out maybe would be that um, my class was the, was the first year zero, but I still consider the course kind of experimental ones. Uh, we are going to give feedback to our teachers and to Kevin, to Raddy, to try to improve the course um, as, to the best that we can. And the year zero is a good place to be if you already have a portfolio, but you don't know really what course of the BAs you want to uh, enroll. And if you already finished the pre-foundation is also a, good, a nice place to be at. So I'd also like to point out that I feel from a student's perspective that this course isn't really for everyone because you gain a lot of uh, freedom and independence. So you have the chance to attend uh, the BAs classes and you need to have a lot of discipline and keep yourself motivated and be passionate about your work so you don't let yourself go astray, you know? Uh, so what I mean by that is that uh, self-sabotage is real <laughs> and I feel like it happens to everyone at some point, but you need to make sure that you're communicating with your, your mates and your teachers uh, so that you are like uh, enjoying EBAC to its fullest and getting what you pay for, you know? Um, but yeah, uh, that's mainly what I wanted to say, I think. And also we had setbacks as a class due to the pandemic, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And probably the next year zero won't, won't really have that problem because they're going to start uh, the course with virtual learning. And it was something that we had to adapt to. So you guys are kind of lucky <laughs> in a sad way, I think. But yeah, that's, I think mainly what I wanted to say. Um, that's just some of my work, some of the concept art I, I, I like to make. Um, yeah, I'm so embarrassed. I don't really show my portfolio to many people. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I feel like I've learned a lot. Um, I grew up a lot as a person. Uh, I mean, generally speaking, um, I feel like I matured a lot doing this course and having contact with uh, industry working professionals and teachers definitely helped uh, but yeah you can you can count on them you can always talk to your friends and yeah if you guys uh, ever want to I don't know if you want to talk to me you can like send me a message on Instagram or email me I don't know <laughs> but yeah um Oh, I hope I didn't mumble so much. I don't know what I'm doing really. Um, but yeah, thanks. And that's basically what I wanted to say, I think. That's Said it great. amazingly. 
You should, you should be so proud of it. That's great. Yeah, job. some amazing yeah. work. <laughs> Absolutely amazing work. You know, I'm so proud of uh, my year zero students this year. You know, that, that's something we haven't really addressed. Uh, and I'll just touch on it re briefly. You know, when, when COVID hit, um, you know, we were all forced to, to, to change rapidly. And we had around about, um, you know, what was it a week, Anna? A week's turnaround. And then classes started, everything's virtual. Um, and it was tough, you know, tough for the students. And, and now coming at the end of this, this uh, semester and marking their work and seeing how well they've done in such adverse circumstances, um, I'm proud of every single one of my students. And I'm sure Danny the same with, with his students, you know, hats off to every single student because we never did this when we were at university, you know. So, yeah, you've all done amazingly and I'm, we're, we're super proud of you. So nice. <laughs> That's great. Good job. Good job, Lena. So uh, we are heading to the end of our day three. Are we back live day three? Uh, we have two quick questions in our chat. Uh, one is from Filippi. Filippi asks, I would like to know how hard it is to learn other 3D programs such as Houdini, uh, 3DS Max and Cinema 4D. Coming from someone who already has some experience with Blender. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll, I'll take this one, you know, initially, and Danny can jump in if, if you want to, or even Anna, actually, because you've had experience with all of these softwares. Um, you've been thrown into the, the mix with everything. Um, you know, the reason we start Houdini so so early, and I've, I've, been, I've worked at three different universities in the UK before coming to, to, um, to Brazil and to EBAC. Um, usually what would happen often, and this is not the same with, with UH, we, we share this, is usually they would save the hard programs until later, which is bonkers to me, which I don't un understand why that always happened. I tried to be a change maker for that. Um, you know, so we're trying to start people off as early as possible to learn this stuff because, yeah, you're right. Houdini is a very complex program. Um, and depending what you want to do depends you know, how hard things are. If you want to learn, say, the, the new Solaris and you're just interested in Luke the uh, Dev, maybe, you know, you could get a grip with it fairly easy. But if you want the full generalist kind of, you know, you want to be an effects technical director, a Houdini artist, um, you know, dedication helps. For example, um, one of my students, Saif, who is the guy from Tunisia, when he came to us, he's never used Houdini before. He'd never used Katana before. Now he's actually teaching for EBAC. Um, so he kind of follows uh, what happened to me when I was, uh, I did my undergraduate degree in, in Sheffield Hallam. Um, you know, when I, when I started my degree, I, I already knew Maya, I already knew After Effects, I already knew a bunch of software packages. And then when it came to the crunch, I wanted to learn Houdini, I wanted to learn Nuke, because they were the two things that I could see becoming the next, you know, evolution of, of industry. Um, and it paid off because, again, the same kind of thing with SAFE. I ended up getting hired by my university to, to teach these things after spending three years learning them myself with instruction manuals and not all these you know, videos that you see nowadays. Um, so what we do is we make sure that we give you the grips of everything as early as possible and not just um, pushing buttons in software. That does not work. If you want to understand Houdini, then you should probably understand some physics. You should probably understand some mathematics as well. Um, and that's that technical side of things. But then if you mix in the artistic side of things within the technical, man, you'll be an amazing Houdini artist. You'll be an amazing technical director. Um, you know, and again, just so that Danny can jump in if he wants, um, you know, UH are leading the way in terms of what's happening in, in Britain for uh, those kind of programs, the same way we're leading the way in, in Latin America for, for these kind of softwares. You can learn it and we will help you do that. Yes, I, I think that it's uh, very important to note that the students that we have, the, the transformation that they undergo over the space of three years, they can come to us and have significant art skills that they've developed personally and they will be genuinely surprised at where they reach at the end of the degree. And we feel very strongly that, you know, these are very, very technical programs and they are very challenging, but you sort of have to dive in early and you are fully supported and you work with, you know, world-class tutors on, uh, you know, getting to grips with these programs. But more importantly, 
we make sure that we are very observant of what's going on in the industry. So we make sure that we are completely up to date with what's being used in the industry. So you're not learning for a period of three years and then you suddenly go into the industry and you're out of date. We routinely, constantly calibrate the course to that. And um, I think that, you know, if you're willing to sort of trust in the constant help that you're going to get and embrace the challenge of doing so, then I think you'll really surprise yourself by what you will learn and how you are able to focus your creativity accordingly. And Anna, what was your, um, your thoughts on that? Because you deep dived in. I remember you on your first day. Um, you know, it's like a, a, a happy parent when their you know kid goes to school, but the opposite. You know, um, what was your thoughts on on you know jumping into these really technical programs and and you know being thrown in in the deep end essentially? Well, <laughs> um, it was complicated to say the least. Um, I mean, you, you guys saw most of my portfolio is actually kind of drawing. That's that's because I had never seen a 3d software uh like this time last year like the first contact i ever had with 3d was when i went to a, a, a class with half a v about maya um and yeah i i feel like maybe i should have uh studied it more but like um for example you mentioned houdini um not good at it <laughs> i suck at houdini no, you get it. You get a zebrush, though, aren't you? Yeah, zebrush is zebrush is cute. Um, but yeah, I yeah, think that's the thing. Yeah, sorry. It has, it has a lot to do with what what you like to do. I mean, I I'd rather learn very well how to model something. You know, how to model characters. It's more like artistically driven. You know, um, and I feel like Houdini is very technical, and I I'm not very. I don't, I don't know if I'm a, that type of person, you know, but I mean, you have to learn it at some point because it kind of helps. I mean, UV unwrapping is way easier on Houdini than it is on Maya and it saves you a lot of time, you know, that's, for example. So, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, what, what, what Anna is, is saying, uh, like she, she didn't have much experience and now she's just learning because that, 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 that has everything to do with the next question. There's a question from Rafaela. She's saying, I went to study at IBEC, but I developed interest in the whole creative industry recently. So my portfolio do, doesn't have works with different textures or materials. What would you recommend me? So, um, well, there's a number of things. Obviously, I'm very accessible, um, as are all of our teaching staff and EBAC. We are accessible. Um, you know, if, if you just speak to EBAC, you can get a, 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 you know, a call with me within a couple of days, um, dependent on, you know, many variables. But usually it's like, you know, two days you can be on a call with me. I can assess your portfolio. I can give you advice. Um, we're not going to just turn our noses up and say no to somebody. We have standards, of course, um, a very high standard, just like UH. Um, obviously, we, we kind of, you know, have to have to as we're accredited by UH um, and their standards are very high. So but what I mean is we can give you the best advice rather than wondering by yourself. Am I good enough? What's my portfolio like? Oh, I don't know what to do. The best thing is to reach out to us. You know, like I said, two days, you could be on a call with me or Raddy or a Radina or, or any of the other tutors we have. And we can give you the advice you need. Uh, we can look at everything. We can even um, put you into right now what we're, we're doing because of COVID. Uh, we're scheduling a free portfolio development uh, plan. So we can put you on a program where you can actually get advice from us, check in with us every, you know, over a space of two weeks. So we can look at things that you're doing because um, often students come to us and they think they're not good enough or they don't have what they what, what it takes. But often they've got so many projects just sat in a, in a, in a you know, in a, in a sketchbook or or some models. They think, oh, I, can't, I don't know where to go with this. And that's what the portfolio development or preparation is all about. I was trying to give you advice on those kind of things. So my, my best advice would be reach out to us. We can help you because 
we especially you know myself in brazil i, I have a massive love for the brazilian uh, economy uh, creative economy and the brazilian studios a lot of friends in all the different production houses and you know my passion of the last two years is to see brazil's creative economy grow um, and i'll do anything i can to help that and it may start with you or the next person the next person i mean it's already started i'm not saying it's a bad economy what i mean is you know you, people like yourself can actually make a difference um, with the market. I, I think it's what's important to add to that is that, you know, when we look at a portfolio, obviously we're le learning, are uh, looking for a certain level of skills, but also we do look for the potential for what you can achieve too. And I think that's, that's very identifiable within a portfolio. And if you're willing to be open minded and embrace the potential for new skills. Uh, you know, one of the things we notice about many students is that they don't have a very clear idea at all of where they want to end up. And I think that being open-minded um, about what they might be doing in the future um, is one of the greatest uh, skills that I think you can have from the off, just being open-minded and embracing the possibility to learn different types of art, different skills, uh, because there might not be there might be areas of industrial practice that you're just not aware of and you will learn it while you're at eBack. And um, I think that, you know, don't do yourself down by thinking that your portfolio is not good enough. Just always focus on, you know, what you will might be able to do and uh, you know, dedicate yourself to that. And I think that you'll become a very attractive proposition to uh, to eBack. Just like Anna. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so happy Wonderful. to get you on level four. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we have to finish. I'll just um, share uh, with our audience um, the last round of our six different VA programs uh, by the University of Hertfordshire that we offer here at EBAC. And of course, as we mentioned before, you don't take a vestibular, but you have to uh, present your portfolio in an interview. And we are, as Kevin just said, more than happy to help you with the portfolio for that. And if you still have questions and doubts, please contact our team. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. It was a pleasure listening to you thank all you. tonight. Thank, thank you, Danny, much. Kevin, Rosina, Anna. Always and... fun. Great. Thank you. Thank, uh, thanks to all the audience for spending these three evenings with us. And see you on our next EBAC Live. Thank you, guys. Good night, ciao, everyone. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Boa noite. Boa noite.